friends, my name is Pej. I'm an interventionist and a recovery coach that helps people or that struggle with drug addiction, alcoholism, or mental health, or their families, try to help get them the help that they need, or at least help the families uh, try to process whatever they can in the process of watching their loved one deteriorate. So how do you help a person that's resistant to getting help? I get a lot of phone calls about that, and that's what I wanted to talk about today. Um, People from all walks of life constantly contacting me. Um, a lot of times they are meth cases. A lot of times they are alcoholics. A lot of times they're not sure what their loved one's on. They're just behaving certain ways or doing certain things that are uh, where they're secretive. Some of them are really open about their addiction. Um, so how do you help somebody that's possibly too far gone? Um, often when I when I listen to people and I, and I get the scenario build up of what, what's all going on with them, um, I have to assess and see if they can actually be helped. Um, depending on um, the demographic, where they are, what their what lifestyle they have, are they running the streets, are they getting high from within the home, do they not have a job, do they have a job, are they functioning at work under the influence, or at least uh, appearing to function, and how do we actually get through to them? Like, what do you say? What are the magic words? It's not always easy. You know, I can't... I don't. I, I believe everybody has the ability to get the help that they need, but it's also getting them to the point of understanding that their life isn't working for them, and how are we going to be able to convince them that th the time is right? But also uh, their surroundings. You know, who's around them? Their family members. Uh, are there? Are they living under somebody else's roof? Are they? Uh, is their addiction being uh, nurtured because they don't have to actually pay for everyday life? Um, are, is somebody else in the family a breadwinner? Is somebody actually providing a space for them to, to, in a, you know, to harbor um, a per person in action, active addiction? So what, what do we do in this case? Um, what do we do for a person that's walking the streets, a person that's gone homeless for a while? Sometimes we can't. You know, I, I hate to tell people this, but if somebody is beyond human aid, I think that the ones who are most worried about them need to take care of themselves and their well-being as opposed to being so enmeshed and caught up in what is going on with that individual. Yes, we can love them, but we can love them from a distance. And sometimes that's a really hard pill to swallow, but it's the, 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 the truth. You know, I mean, if I talk to somebody who I, and I, I've, you know, has been going through it and doesn't know what to do with their loved one and they've tried everything they could, they've done their own uh, family interventions, they've gotten friends together, family together, they've had their kids try to talk to their loved one, um, and I see that still the person isn't getting well, uh, how do we get through to that individual? Um, a lot of times people will find me and hire me for my services as an interventionist, and I will try to go and, you know, first I need to do a pre-intervention with the family and see, you know, how we can go about it if the person, if we can even find them, um, and then get in front of them to be able to do what we need to do. Then we go through the process of sitting down and, and seeing exactly how long uh, this person's been in active addiction, how long has it been a problem, um, have they experienced job loss, or um, have they just been running amok and running the streets for a, a period of time? And then how do we actually find them and, and how do we initiate a plan of action to do an intervention on them? Um, a lot. I see a lot of miracles happen. I don't think that you should ever give up hope, um, but if you've tried everything and a person just doesn't want to get well and they're fully resistant and they're not responsive, then sometimes we have to um, allow them to get to their bottom in their own time. And then, you know, when I say a bottom, a lot of times when I was new in recovery myself, because I am in recovery, I would hear that every bottom has a trap door. So we have to also remember that sometimes somebody might hit a bottom, or at least it, that they perceive that to be their bottom, but they, they come into the path or they get cleaned up and then they um, you know get better after a little while and go back to the old lifestyle again. So every bottom has a trap door because uh, what is your actual bottom? Is it losing things physically, tangibly, or uh, do you have to actually have a spiritual bottom to where you get so honest with yourself that you decide you want to change your life? I believe that is like the ultimate bottom that one, that one could experience. And um, that can happen for anybody and I believe that everybody can get real with themselves but, uh, but how do we get them to that point? I believe a lot of times when families are trying to fix an individual, um, whether they're hovering or they're helicopter moms and dads or they're constantly uh, in the mix of trying to get their loved one to understand that uh, 
they, they are more than this or they shouldn't be doing this or why are you doing this to yourself? Why are you doing this to your family? Why are you doing this to your kids? A lot of times when somebody's in active addiction, they're not going to hear that. Um, they're not going to hear it, especially if it's coming from the ones who love them the most. Sometimes it actually can trigger the individual, which makes them make more of an excuse to use and drink over it because they're tired of hearing things that they perceive to be um, a lecture as opposed to them actually, um, you know, seeing them as a voice of reason and deciding to make a big difference in their life. Sometimes, though, you know, there are people that they know they aren't doing well and their families will talk to them and they actually listen and they actually change their lives. So there's always hope for, for many different types of people. If, if you, The point of what we do as interventionists is to be able to try to meet with somebody. If it's somebody with alcoholism, sometimes my alcoholism can touch their alcoholism. Sometimes my past addictive lifestyle can understand where they are and, I, and I'm able to be somebody different outside of a family system that is, you know, third party, a person, a professional, but also one that has self-disclosed and, um, and been a, an addict or an alcoholic in the past and is able to talk to them and then get through to them and get them to actually make a decision to change their life, whether it be on that day of the intervention or give them some time to um, process their emotions, their feelings, and realize that there is help. People care. No one turned their back on you. Just uh, please get to a point where you make a decision before it's too late. If you know somebody who's struggling with addiction or alcoholism and they're really resistant, you can always call me or text me at either 310-596-9356 or 949-751-7761. Either one of those is my number. You can also look me up here on YouTube. Please subscribe to the channel. We talk with people from all walks of life. We have a podcast called Peggy's Recovery Corner and we make a lot of these types of videos to let you know that there is help out there and, um, and I'll make myself available to you uh, when you contact me. Again, my name is Pej. I'm the interventionist and the recovery coach.